name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. I greet you on this fourth Sunday of the Great and Holy Lent, the Sunday of St. John of the Ladder, John Klimakos, the one whose book called The Ladder is famous among the Orthodox, not only the monastics, but among us ourselves, that lays the path to the divine ascent. St. John talks about 30 steps, 30 virtues, that one has to struggle and climb as a ladder. And as they do, as they do so, as you see in the icon of the ladder right here, the enemy will tempt us, pulling us down, taking us all the way down. The gospel lessons, lesson today teaches us to believe in order to pray and to pray in order to believe. We find the Father who is desperate. His son is demon-possessed. The Gospel of St. Matthew is called a lunatic. He doesn't act normally. He is nothing like a human being. The Father goes to the disciples, nine of them, knowing that they are trained by the great teacher, the healer. The teacher was up on the mountain where he transfigured himself in front of the other three disciples. And as they approach, as the Father and the Son approach the, the disciples of the Lord, they could not do anything about healing their son. We find here in this event a man who is very weak in faith, the Father. St. John Chrysostom is very harsh with words about him, calling him that he didn't have faith. We see him here approaching the Lord himself after the disciples could not do anything about his son. If you can do anything, have mercy on us and help us. A man of faith doesn't approach Christ with the word if, as he did here. A sign that he did not believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God who had the power to heal all diseases. And the Lord asks him back, if you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to the one who believes. You have to believe before you pray. You have to believe before you ask me something. You have to believe before you ask me to heal your son. Can you believe? Do you have faith? The Lord brings this back to him. He tells him, you have to believe in order to pray. Remember the Pharisees and the scribes? Some saw the, the blind man being healed. Some saw Lazarus being brought from the dead four days after his death. And they did not believe. They could not believe. They could not because their heart was hard. Believing and having faith has to do with that can, has to do with the work of each and every one, of a struggle. Can you believe? Do you have faith? Remember Peter when he was with, his, this, with the other disciples in the boat on the water? The Lord approached the boat and they thought it was a ghost. And the Lord calls Peter after saying, no, it is I. Come to me. And what a beautiful example of strong faith. Peter walked on the water, but he got to a point where a distraction came in. He looked at the water, at the waves, and he started to sink. It's the opposite of the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees and the scribes. He had genuine, strong faith that worked a miracle, working, walking on the water. But the second he lost focus on Christ, he started to sink. And so is with our faith. At times stronger, at times weaker. At times non-existent. As it was with this man here, whose faith was almost nothing. But the man responded to Jesus' call in a way that produced the most powerful prayer that one could say, I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, I'm just a father. 
I don't have any faith. I don't believe you help me. So how should we take this? I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. I either believe or not believe. What's happening with this? How should we understand this? What the Father says is, Lord, I don't have much faith, but I believe that you, God, can give me that faith. You can make me believe. I believe that you can make me believe. Otherwise, on my own, I don't have this. So we see here a turning of the table. The Father, who was told by Jesus, believe in order to pray. If you believe anything can be possible, you can move the mountains. We see, him, we see this poor father himself being transfigured in a way, responding to this, praying to believe. He's praying to God for his very faith to believe. We see the call to believe, to pray, changed into a prayer to believe. I believe, help my unbelief. And the Lord might have liked this more than he liked the answers of those whom he asked before the sick ones. Do you believe that I can heal you? And they said, yes, Lord, I believe. And he healed them. This must have been extraordinary for the man himself to be enlightened to say these words, this prayer, and for the Lord to hear this. And he healed the boy. He cast out the demon, the dumb demon out of him. And we find afterwards the disciples approaching the Lord and asking, Hey, Lord, how come? You told us that you gave us the power to heal all the illnesses and to, to cast out the demons. How come we could not do it? And the Lord says, This kind of demon can only be driven out but by prayer and fasting. You didn't have enough faith. The father, the child, the disciples, you whole generation, law of faith. But by prayer, you pray, your faith will grow. And why is this? Because the faith, our, the way we believe, is not something that we produce on our own. Faith, along with hope and love, are the three what we call theological virtues that depend on our struggle, on our contribution, our labor to be faithful, to be hopeful, and to be loving. But they are complementing by God in His grace, in His goodness, in His love, in His help. So we enter the circle of prayer and belief, Belief and prayer in the midst of the great and holy fast. It is a message that the fathers of the church brings, brings to us today. Not because we're demon-possessed, but because we deal with the effects of the demons attacking our lives, the ones we inherit as well, with our passions, with our habits, with our distance from God, and to be healed, one must have that powerful prayer. To have that prayer, one must believe. And for one to believe, one must pray to God to grant him the grace, the mercy, the love, everything needed to have faith, hope, love. So, so it is with us with the great and holy land. What is given to us? The time to pray. Tithing at the limit this times, 10% of our times as a minimum should be dedicated to prayer in church and privately at home. One is orthodox because he participates in the life of the church. This kind of prayer, this kind of belief, a little bit of struggle that we do, God will come in and compensate. How about healing our passions and our bad habits? 
There are about 30 steps in the ladder. St. John talks about them, about anger, about lust, about love for money, about being lazy, about lying. You name them. St. John says the message that he delivers is that no one can be illumined. No one can be made godlike. No one be, can be glorified in the kingdom of heavens unless we purge and clean our hearts. Cleaning, purging. And this takes place through climbing on, this, on, this, on the ladder, on these steps, through obedience, through submission to the will of God in everything we do, not in just some things, through confession, through prayer and fasting. Again, fasting as the, the framework of everything happening, enabling everything else, not a purpose in itself, and careful here, through the prayer of the elders, of the fathers that are our spiritual fathers. St. John Chrysostom says, Nothing is stronger than a person or a man who prays properly. What does it mean properly? With faith. When we have faith, the prayer becomes proper. To have faith, we have to pray for it. And then the mountains will be moved. And nothing is more powerful than that. Did you ever see an airplane taking off? I'm sure you did. At the airport, as you show up early for the flight, you look on the window and see the airplanes picking up speed. They start from zero. Then they pick up speed. The engines go all the way to the floor. And they run and run and run and run and run. They pick up speed. And only after a while, they decouple from the ground, rising towards the skies. So is with our illnesses, our sinfulness, the effect of the demons, our struggle through faith and prayer and fasting during the whole year, especially during the Great Lent, is giving us speed. And if you feel that you don't conquer that bad habit, and if you feel that that thought against your neighbor is still there in your heart, and if you feel that that drive to be there on time and do the prayers where they should be done is not there, do not give up. Pick up more speed through more prayer, faith, and fasting. The Lord will add to that more speed. And you will take over and rise over that passion or habit or feeling. Let this happen. And if you get discouraged, remember the poor father today and his prayer. And repeat it over and over again. I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. Amen.